Welcome everyone um, to this B Corp month panel. Uh, March is, is a month of celebration always for the B Corp movement. It's the, it's the month where we, one of the many months of course of the year where we spotlight and highlight some of the amazing stories of B Corps around the world uh, using business as a force for good. Uh, today we have uh, the honor of having three of us uh, with us today uh, who will tell us more about how they're, how they're uh, using business to drive positive change um, in Slovenia, uh, in Greece, and in Turkey. Before, uh, right before we kick off, I'd just like to take a moment to introduce ourselves. I'd like to introduce my colleague, uh, Nico Gremio, uh, who's based here in Amsterdam together with me at the Bila Bureau office and who you'll be hearing from in a second. And my name is Sarah Garcia. I lead the head of, I lead the markets development team here at Bila Bureau. Uh, and so it's, it's our pleasure and honor to be presenting to you guys uh, and hosting this panel today. Just to give you a little bit uh, of an insight into what the uh, hour will look like, uh, we'll briefly spend some time introducing the B Corp movement for those who might have not heard about the movement before. Um, we'll then uh, move towards uh, introducing our, our panelists who you'll see, who will we, be speaking with you today, and then we'll move on to our panel. So we'll be asking the panelists three questions, one of them which will come from you, the audience. So again, please don't forget to put your questions in the chat. Uh, and then we'll be closing with some additional information uh, of where you can find uh, tools and resources that might be beneficial for me for you after uh, to get yourself more acquainted with uh, the movement. So to kick off, uh, B Lab started in 2006 under the vision uh, of an, an inclusive, equitable, and regenerative economic system for all people in the planet. Um, we came from a premise where knowing that the private sector and business had been behind some of the biggest crises of our time, be it biodiversity crisis, be it the climate crisis, be it the inequality crisis, it also can and must be uh, a driver to change the system and be a force for good. Um, our tools and standards and premises really come from a feeling that the 20th century, which was characterized from shareholder around shareholder value, which is exclusive, which is for the for short term and which is extractive needs and must move to a different kind of economic system, one that is based on stakeholder value. So one that's inclusive, one that's long-term and one that is uh, regenerative. So what is, what is the B Corp movement and what makes it unique? So uh, B Corps around the world and actually not only B Corps, our tools are open uh, and free to, to anyone uh, wanting to measure and improve their impact. But B Corps are committed to measuring their impact using the B Impact Assessment. Um, our tools and resources are available on our website. So if you wanna start your impact journey uh, today, you can do so. Um, secondly, something that characterizes B Corps is mission log. So all companies seeking to become a B Corp must change their legal statutes to show that they take all stakeholders uh, in mind in their decision making and not only shareholders. So it's really about embedding uh, the notion of uh, stakeholder governance within uh, a company statutes. Thirdly, they're part of a global movement. B Corps come together in all shapes and forms uh, to bring collective actions and create change across industries, across sectors um, in all parts of the planet. And then there is this uh, notion and commitment to continuous improvement. So every three years, B Corps must recertify. Uh, and we see time and time again, uh, it, it's B Corps improving their score. So it's not just, it's not just about uh, certification, it's about really keeping that commitment to continuous improvement uh, year over year. And uh, this is where we are today. Uh, like I said, we started in 2006, and since then uh, we've grown to an incredible community of six, more than 6,400 B Corps. There's more than half a million employees working for B Corps worldwide in 89 countries across 100 and more than 160 industries, but all behind one unifying goal, which is that business can and must be a force for good. And so there might be more than 6,400, but today we have uh, the honor of having three uh, of them today. And with that, I'd love to pass it on to my colleague, Nico, who's going to uh, introduce you to our lovely panel. Thank you very much for the introduction. Sarah, we have a diverse panel today that you'll be able to learn from. Uh, we have companies from different regions, different sectors, they became certified B Corps at different times as well, different sizes. So that would be very interesting. And as you might have seen, this session is being 
recorded, we will upload this to B-Lab Europe's YouTube channel. So hopefully you'll be able to share with others what you learned here today. And we have uh, Jana Api from Visit Good Place. We have Koray Gocher from FASLA and Sotiris Pastras from Apivita. I'm, I'm really excited that we are finally here today and, and able to learn from you. Uh, so as, as Sarah suggested, we uh, will hear uh, seven minutes or so presentations from uh, the speakers, you know about the story, about of their impact journey. And later we'll, we'll have time for questions. Uh, we have prepared a couple of questions because we're also very curious about the everyday uh, and, and the philosophy of these B Corps. And, but we'll also have space for uh, questions from you, the audience. So please use the chat uh, as much as you can uh, to comment, but also to ask questions uh, addressed specifically at any of the speakers or uh, the three of them. And moving to the next slide, uh, first we have Jana Api, who is sustainability manager and co-founder of Visit Good Place in Slovenia. Uh, the focus of today's session is not the B impact assessment or impact business models, but I do want to highlight that uh, Visit Good Place is a company that got uh, uh, points in the environmental education and information impact business models and also on health and wellness improvement. They certified last year, so it's it's uh, quite recent uh, that they're a certified B Corp. We try to stay away from uh, we, we disencourage companies from claiming that they have become the first B Corp in the country or in the region uh, or in the sector. But in this case, uh, Visit Good Place is uh, clearly leading the way in Slovenia, and we want to celebrate that today. Jana, um, I think you are, I'm not sure if you consider yourself a, a serial entrepreneur, but I know that Visit Good Place as a company is not the only thing that you have started. So I'm very curious to hear more. The floor is yours now. Uh, thank you very much. Um, first, thank you for this really kind invitation. Uh, I'm happy to share our experience. Uh, maybe if we just move forward to my presentation and I can maybe introduce myself a little bit more. Uh, if it, can you just go for that, please? Yeah, well, as mentioned before, I'm a co-founder of the, actually, let's say we have two legs. One is an NGO, this is a good, uh, good place, which is um, Institute for Sustainable Tourism. And this all started with this uh, founding this institute. And later on where um, this uh, institute was mostly focusing on development sustainable tourism within Slovenia, uh, helping destinations and businesses to become more sustainable in tourism. We kind of realized that not that when helping them, that's maybe not enough. That we can also that we should also support destinations and businesses when putting their sustainable tourism products and their offer on the market. So that's why we created a travel agency, which is called Visit Good Place. And our main uh, vision from the start on was that we uh, support destinations and businesses with development of sustainable tourism uh, products and put them on the market. So like um, also support to that part of the, of, of the business. Um, and uh, one thing which was like the main uh, goal or the main activity of the good place is we manage um, Green Scheme of Slovenian Tourism, which is a national program for sustainable tourism in Slovenia. And we also manage a consortium Slovenia Green, which is like an association of destinations and businesses who were already uh, certified and we can work with them together. Can we go further? Yeah, so as I said, we have like uh, an NGO and a visit good place as a travel agency. Um, and further, uh, I will just like to explain really shortly uh, in Slovenia, we have like Slovenia is a very green country. Um, regarding, we have like 60% of Slovenia is covered with with forest, uh, 130 some under some nature protection, and we always were promoting ourselves green. And that's why we, as a third party, if we go further, we develop the green program, the green scheme of Slovenian tourism. And you can also go further. Um, yeah, this is like a green scheme of Slovenian tourism. It's a certification program for sustainable tourism. And in the next slide, please. Um, and the way it is developed is that we kind of adopted the existing certification programs uh, for private sector destinations and businesses. And on top of them, we got uh, 
if, for example, we are also Slovenia Green Travel Agency, we got a travel life for sustainable destination, for sustainable tour operators. And on top of that, we got a Slovenia Green Travel Agency. And if you go further, in 2014, 24, we think that we are going to add, uh, we, will, we will manage to add B Corp as one of the primer certifications that we will encourage our businesses in Slovenia to get. Um, and further, mm, so now the, the, the fact after this, let's say since 2015, um, almost 95% of overnights in Slovenia happens in certified destinations. So this is like, a, I would say a really big achievement that we managed to achieve. Um, but if we go further, we were all, so Slovenia was with that recognized as one of the best cases how national um, tourism is organized when it comes to, to sustainability, um, because this Slovenia green approach, which is um, run by this, which is actually owned and run by the Slovenian Tourist Board, and we, our goal is to be accredited partner and we are actually responsible for everything what's happening on ground with destinations and businesses. Um, and now here where it comes the role of our agency, we go further. Um, the thing is that, of course, labels on sustainable tourism can promote green facts and green values of destinations and businesses. But of course, then it's always a question, what is it in for the visitor and how a visitor can experience that sustainability? Um, can we go further? And uh, so the question is actually, actually how to build on that sustainability as a ground and create a green value, a green value for the visitors um, further. Mm, so that was the main goal actually, or the main vision of uh, Visit Good Place, that we are starting to combine those experiences with uh, um, tourism products. So that means that basically our, our main uh, ground was uh, coming from sustainability and, sustain and development of sustainable tourism. And if we go further, so uh, our main, let's say how the pro how the the products are now being developed within the within the travel agency is that we build on uh, certified incredible destinations and businesses, and we focus on unique stories, and we attract them, and we actually connect them in the adventures, and um, we use the green nature, of course, as the basis of our tours. Um, so the idea is to have something which is easy, accessible for, for guests and easy to buy for them. So it's not like something, if I want to travel sustainable, what does that actually mean? How do I do it? How do I organize my tours? So that's why that is the question which we are answering within the uh, travel agency. Um, can we go further? So, and further. Um, so with that, we actually um, developed our unique approach on developing uh, green routes. So that means that we are connecting certified destinations and businesses. We are doing that in partnership with Slovenian Tourist Board and with the consortium Slovenia Green. So as part of those tours, you can like freely download from the Slovenia Green webpage and we build on them and create tourism products which are guided or self-guided. And further, um, so the main idea on the main methodology of how we are doing this is that we are connecting Slovenia green destinations and businesses. Um, all our tours are to become CO2 neutral. That means that we are using mostly uh, biking and train mobility. Uh, we also have a compensation schemes behind for all the tours, no single use plastics. We are using family owned certified destinations. We built on authentic experience and boutique, boutique offer. Um, and the whole the whole route is developed in a really professional way from a, having a developer, photographer, storyteller, and uh, photo and video. And if you go further, the result of that was that uh, we had a huge media coverage of uh, how um, because the Slovenia green routes are really proven to be. Um, really sustainable because they're based on destinations which are already certified, but they have unique stories behind. So we are basing some of, for example, astronomy, wellness, or some nature observation and so on. So we are creating this Slovenia green roots around the uh, topic, around the theme, and we were really uh, covered with all the media. And if you go further um, this year, for National Geographic, National Geographic named Slovenia Green 
gourmet route as one of the best in the world on the list of the 23 um, best experiences for the for the next year. So that means that once you do the things right, people will notice, will appreciate it, and will also award you not like only with the awards, but of course, especially with people coming to Slovenia. So we see a number, we see a really huge number of downloads and people using our tracks and of course also using our tours and booking with our agency. And just to wrap it up, uh, the, the last slide. Um, so the green routes uh, are actually ways to experience sustainable tourism. So that means that we are actually really putting sustainable tourism on the market as a product. Um, it's a motivation factor also for certification. So that means like since we are connecting certified destinations and businesses, also other businesses actually need to get certified if they want to be part of it. So that means that there's a different motivation for them. And it's also, of course, a really good marketing and sales option for certified destinations nations and businesses because through that we can push them further on the market and we see that that is a really the right way to do it because we see the reaction of the market so i think i maybe overstepped for a minute uh, <laughs> i was trying to get it fast through but this is uh, our general approach and uh, if later on you have more questions uh, i will be happy to share of course that was just on time, uh, Jana. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to hearing more. Uh, I think that by listening to you and also as I was exploring the Visit Good Place website, one can really see how the future of tourism looks like or, or imagine it, uh, an industry that is transforming quickly and you're clearly uh, leading the way there uh, in Slovenia and beyond. So thank you so much for thank doing you. that. And we move on to our next speaker, which is uh, Koray Kocher from Fasla. If we follow the Mediterranean coast uh, a bit south and a bit east, we reach Turkey, where this company is headquartered. And Fasla is a waste management um, software uh, and, and, and a key player uh, in, in waste management. And, really curious about um, how this uh, industry works and, and the role of uh, FASLA and their services specifically. FASLA also certified last year around the same time uh, as Visit Good Place actually. And I mentioned before impact business models, which are a very important dimension of BLAB's uh, assessment where we recognize the extraordinary and unique uh, performance of uh, companies. And in this case, FASLA's impact business model is called resource conservation. So I am very curious to, to hear how you bring that to life in your everyday life. Korai is a marketing and new business lead at FASLA. Over to you, Korai. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you for the introduction. So uh, Jana's presentation just triggered me to have a trip to Slovenia. I don't know if ours will be so appealing. Uh, but let's start. Uh, so let me just define the problem first on the next slide. Uh, today, unfortunately, uh, we all live like there are like two, two Earths existing, but unfortunately, there is only one. So we are just, you know, uh, using the resources and creating the waste uh, as of that the Earth can tolerate them all, but it cannot. So looking at the picture, uh, we see that uh, at food and uh, yearly 1.3 billion tons of food waste is generated. And this is almost roughly one third of the total food production. Um, let's look at the textile. So almost 100 billion tons of textile products are ending up in the waste every year. And if we look at the chemical products, it's again huge, like 13 tons of hazardous products are wasted every second and 8 million tons of plastic products are left in the sea or into the oceans every year. So there is a huge waste problem in the world. And if we go to the next slide, we see that every single stakeholder in the chain is unfortunately a part of this problem being a manufacturer or being a retailer doesn't matter so each stakeholder creates uh, a certain part uh, of this waste problem so very briefly coming to 
what fazla does, we are offering technology-based holistic waste management solutions to our customers. Establishing 2016, Fazla is an impact-oriented startup and uh, with the technology-based solutions, we first prevent the generation of the waste. And if we cannot, then we uh, regain the waste generated with the highest economical, social, and environmental value. And to be able to do that, uh, we need to have a methodology. Uh, and this is the uh, recovery hierarchy that you see on the right-hand side. This is a triangle. And at the upper steps of the triangle, you create the higher value. So therefore, the first intention should be to be uh, on the uh, very highest step uh, of the hierarchy. If you cannot remain there, then you go one step uh, down. Uh, if you cannot, you go one step down further. So the first step is reduction at source, which means that you just find a way to prevent the waste generation at the source. So there is no waste at all. Uh, it can be done via technology, via data-driven approach, via analysis, etc. Here, as you can see, we are providing four different services, which include a mobile application called Fazla app, which connects the restaurants, cafes, and the end consumers uh, to end the waste, uh, which can be generated uh, at these uh, food stations. The second one is the consultancy that we uh, give our customers with the know-how that we have generated so far. The third one is a smart scale system which uh, targets hotels, restaurants, and caterings and tries to uh, decrease the food waste generation at professional kitchens. Uh, and the last one here is a, a marketplace, a B2B liquidation platform where you can resell uh, your products at your stock, uh, which will end up in the waste otherwise. In the second step, if we cannot reduce uh, the waste at the source, then the first thing we need to do is uh, to donate those products to those in need. And we are running donation operations uh, all over in Turkey right now. If you cannot donate the product, then uh, the last solution is industrial uses, which includes animal feed and biogas. So the main differentiating point for Fazla is that with all these seven services, we covered all the uh, steps of the hierarchy, which means we are providing holistic solutions. Whatever the condition of the product, uh, the of the surplus, or let's say, of our customers, we are just providing a solution to them. So on the next slide, uh, you will see our impact so far. Uh, we have uh, achieved to save around 60k tons of food, which is around 83k tons of carbon emission prevention. And with the donation operations that I have mentioned to you, uh, we are currently serving donations. We are uh, regularly donating food to 1.25 million people uh, in need in Turkey. And if we go one slide further, uh, we have received a lot of awards uh, with the holistic approach that we have created so far. Uh, we are the first Turkish startup supported by uh, UNDP and the uh, other uh, awards here just uh, give us the confidence that we are on the right track. Uh, on the last one, um, we, we have a special one. Uh, as Nico has mentioned, we have recently uh, get the B Corp certification. And we believe that um, it's been a bit late, actually. Uh, it's been now six, seven years since we have established. And the business model that we have created is just shaped uh, on the impact itself. So therefore, uh, what we were doing was uh, very uh, in parallel with what B Corp was certifying actually. Uh, so uh, it's been like six years since we uh, could the uh, application. But we believe that uh, an international certification, uh, the B Corp, is uh, just showing the value of the impact that we create. 
and showing the value of the business model that we have created. So therefore, we are very proud uh, to be a B Corp company. So thank you very much. Uh, and I will go into the details in the questions part. Thank you, Gorag, for sharing your leadership and spirit of innovation. We'll hear more in a few minutes in the questions. In the interest of time, I'll move straight to the next speaker, who is Sotiris Pastras. He is the Sustainability and Corporate Social Responsibility Manager at Apivita. Apivita is based in Greece and a valuable member of the B Corp community for a few years now, uh, since they certified in 2017. That means that they have already gone through one recertification cycle. Uh, they scored on many impact business models that I'm not going to, to read out loud, but with uh, no less than 117 points. Um, really, really eager to, to hear from you, uh, Sotiris. When you're ready, the floor is yours. Thank you, Nicola. Thank you, Sarah. Good morning, everyone. Kalimera from Greece. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Big Lab Europe for the, for the invitation. You know, uh, the tagline of this March, of this Big Corp Month, is uh, we go beyond, and Big Lab Europe makes this come true. I will take seven minutes of your time to present you briefly Apivita, uh, a natural cosmetic brand, a brand that uh, totally meets the current market trends, uh, highly natural, deeply sustainable, and strongly effective. Our passion and commitment to natural and human ecosystems are at the center of everything we do. So Apivita comes from Greece and is built around the simple and pure concept of bee products and Mediterranean flora boosted by science. So please let's move forward to our next slide. It all started back in 1979 when two young pharmacists, pioneers in uh, environmental sustainability, passionate about the bee society and inspired by Greek nature biodiversity, created their first natural cosmetics in a pharmacy in Athens. The story of Apivita is a story of passion, is a story of uh, commitment, a story and vision. Inspired by the synergy between bees and Greek nature, Apivita places this passion and commitment to the environment at the heart part of everything we do. Just like the beehive, our company is a living organism that never stops creating and uh, distributing value. Value for the environment, value for the society, and value for the economy. Our products, which travel in 55 countries all over the world, are developed in a spirit of sustainability and responsibility in order to achieve beauty that respects nature and people. So in the next slide, I would like to say that in a world facing several social and environmental challenges, we choose to serve our values and missions. We choose to join forces with entities sharing the same concerns and goals as we. So for Apivita, the participation in the B Corp movement is of high importance, depicting our environmental and social initiatives, our commitments towards the environment, our people and the society, and it provides us the inspiration and the motivation not to be the best in the world, as we usually say, but to become better for the world. So in the next uh, slide, you can see that having obtained uh, a position among, among the rest of the B Corps since 2017, we renewed as you mentioned, uh, Nicola, our certification last year in 2022, receiving the outstanding coverall score of 117.2 points, and also renewing our commitments towards our stakeholders, um, setting for even more ambitious and demanding goals for the future. As you can see, there was a significant progress of 32.7 points between these two assessments. And as you can also see in the table, we have improved a lot on the fields of uh, workers, community and environment, and we seek to reach 140 points in our next uh, certification progress. Before we proceed, I would like you to watch a short video introducing you to the B Corp uh, world of Apivita.
Um, I would like to highlight that uh, the B Corp certification, the B Impact Assessment itself, helped us a lot in terms of taking part uh, in several sustainability uh, initiatives, projects, etc. For example, in 2021, for the first time in our history, we have calculated our total carbon footprint as a result of uh, our business activities in scopes one, two, and three. So then we took a big step forward in our commitment to addressing sustainability issues. We joined important global initiatives such as the science-based targets project, and we registered for the first time in the CDP, in the Carbon Disclosure Project, positioning ourselves as a company committed to the major international challenges. Uh, furthermore, last year, our hive, our factory here in uh, Greece, was certified with the Bremen Use International Certification. Uh, the state-of-the-art facilities are fully aligned with the company's values and uh, stand uh, as a true to life symbol of sustainability innovation and groundbreaking integration of the workplace in its natural environment. In the next slide, you can see that Apivita, uh, we, we dream of a sustainable future. Uh, we always dream of a sustainable future. We are respecting the environment, people and the society constitutes our main priority. In this context, since March of 2022, we are also a passionate member of a Be Beauty Coalition a network of uh, responsible beauty brands committed to work together to improve the sustainability standards of the industry. So in the next slide, you can see that the Be Beauty Coalition counts today more than 60 members worldwide, promoting a more sustainable approach of beauty that enables positive change across the entire beauty industry landscape. All of the companies participate, devote time, energy, and expertise for a greater common purpose. Uh, as an active and proud member, Apivita aims to further support the coalition and the wider community with its crucial contribution in the critical fields of innovation and development, always focusing on the social and environmental impact of its actions and initiatives. So let's move forward to our, my final slide. I would like to thank once again Bill Lab Europe for the invitation. I am more than able to say that we are all on board on this fascinating sustainability journey to build a better world for present and future generations. Actually, it's our duty and our call to action. Thank you. Incredible, Sotiris. I have uh, no words. Thank you so much uh, also to, to the other speakers for being able to synthesize uh, so much this dimension of your life, which is uh, your work and that is making such a big difference. Thank you all. And it was also great to see in this last presentation the spirit of continuous improvement, which is at the heart of the Beaker movement. And I have a first question that I prepared for you. Uh, and thank you for, yeah, it's, it's great to see everyone now. The first question is, you're all pioneering uh, B Corps and you're, you're leading the way in showing uh, the rest of the world, uh, and especially in your country, how business can be a force for good. We've seen what are the good things and the opportunities that come with that. We, we, we have heard a tiny bit, but we're curious, what are some of the challenges that you had to overcome, especially in, in terms of impact management? What are some of the challenges that, that you had to get over to get to where you are today? And I suggest that we just look at each other and, and see whoever feels more ready to, to speak first. Maybe I can go ahead. So there is a very similar question in the chat as well from Ushulai. So what are the challenges briefly for short term and midterm for FASLA? law? Um, let me maybe start uh, with, with, with our story. So uh, when we were established like six years ago, impact driven startup concept was uh, so to say really new uh, in Turkey and uh, there were only a few impact driven startups so first mission was like to create an awareness about what we are doing about how an impact driven startup is different uh, compared to others uh, and um, to be honest mostly we were perceived as a non-profit organization um, as I have mentioned during the presentation, we are running like donation operations as well, and we are doing it uh, with a digital platform. And this digital platform is offered as a service and we charge for it. And most of the companies were like automatically assuming that, okay, this is 
done for free. Uh, so first of all, we needed to educate uh, the sector about uh, what is an impact-driven startup. And as a natural outcome of this, a second challenge also arises, which is the uh, investors part, uh, which is very important for the startups. So uh, as the understanding of the impact-driven startups are a bit lacking, investors were also a bit more suspicious uh, to invest in, in those startups. So we were a bit lucky because we were just working with the biggest retailers of Turkey, uh, both national and international ones. Therefore, we could uh, overcome these concerns a bit easier. Uh, but at the investor's end, uh, recently I can tell that investors are more willing to invest in um, impact driven startups as well. Uh, maybe a third point can be the legislations. These differ from country to country, of course, but uh, for, for Turkey, uh, at the beginning of our road, the local legislations were like a bit obstacle for uh, what we were doing. Uh, and Fazla was actually established with a mindset of becoming a benefit corporation. Uh, but unfortunately, in Turkey, uh, benefit corporation is legally not possible. So there's not such a legal status uh, for that. So therefore, for example, to be able to run our operations eff effectively, efficiently, uh, we had to establish an NGO as well. Uh, we, it is called Food Rescue Association, Gıda Kurtarma Derneği for Turkish speakers. Uh, we are right now running our donation operations in an organic relationship with this NGO. Uh, and we, we could only grow our impact in Turkey further uh, with the establishment of this NGO. And maybe a bit specific for our area, but last but not least, the waste management uh, was not, not a priority at all or, or a focus area for, for the companies in Turkey. And sustainability was like more perceived as a tool for marketing rather than just improving their way of working, et cetera. So we had to educate our customers as well by showing them the long-term impact, the economical, social, and environmental value that they can create by managing their waste. Uh, and only after that, they become like more willing to integrate our system with theirs. So, there are like many more points, but uh, I can pass the word uh, to Jana or Sotiris. Yeah, okay. So uh, let me go uh, further first or second. Um, well, I think that we went maybe from the other side, how this whole thing started. And our main um, vision and goal for both the NGO and the company was always like how to support and how to make sure that businesses and destinations in Slovenia, but not only in Slovenia, we also work out of Slovenia, um, are managing their business in a more sustainable way. So that was our, let's say, our, the, our starting point, you know, and tourism agency kind of grew out of that. Um, so this is still our, like, let's say, a very strong leg of our operation is really uh, educating, working with them, trying to get them on board of certification. Um, so that was always part of it, and it still is, and it will always remain because we work a lot with our businesses, uh, even in in a in a, in a company, not only through the NGO. Um, but I think that the biggest challenge, or the biggest yeah, interesting thing maybe for for us was that uh, sustainable tourism in relationship to B Corp. The difference would, uh, as we see it, is that. We mostly manage our negative impacts, you know, in sustainable tourism, how to minimize the negative impact that the tourism is actually bringing. And not so much emphasis is given on how you can create a better value and create a positive impact. Uh, last year, we were one of the groups of, in the group of preparing a new strategy for Slovenian tourism. And as a vision, we wrote down that the vision of Slovenian tourism is a lower impact. Um, uh, a lower foot, footprint and a bigger positive impact for all stakeholders in tourism. And I think that B Corp goes very well with that part also, which was maybe through all the certifications in sustainability, in tourism, 
left out and it was also for us uh, uh, maybe a challenge but in a positive way that we were thinking more like not just how to manage the, the, the bad part of the tourism but how to really increase the positive impact that the tourism can bring because it is bringing it to local communities it also it's a very important in, a source for nature conservation and all those positive benefits that can bring. So in our process of certification, we made, because we already had before the certificates for sustainable tourism, but the big thing was that we changed and we shift and we really started to think more and more on the positive impacts that we are already bringing, but that we can increase. And out of that, all those tours and routes and all those these approaches was are actually also part of that because thinking about what else can you do as a business um, to increase that positive impact? I think it's something which is, was really missing in, in tourism on general, not only in Slovenia. And I'm really happy that we, as it looks like we will, we will manage to include B Corp in, under the Slovenia Green Umbrella as well. So that means that more businesses will follow and that we will be able to make this shift not only on our operation, but also on a bigger scale in Slovenia. Yeah, and, and just one thing that the biggest problem is, and was and still is, it's lack of knowledge about B Corp in our country. So that's why it was like for us, holding the flag and saying like, this is also very important and we need to talk about it. Um, it was, it's a challenging, very rewarding, but also quite hard. On the other side. It's my turn, I suppose. You can go. Okay, uh, regarding Kaipivita, we would like to use uh, preferably the word uh, challenge and not a hurdle or a problem or obstacle. I would like to say, first of all, that Apivita is the first and only B Corp certified company in Greece. So this is a huge challenge itself as there is no benchmark and mostly important there is no awareness about B Corps in Greece you know people often ask our people what is this B in your communication what is this logo all about so for Apivita the challenge is double not just to be certified uh, but also to communicate the certification and let our uh, local stakeholders to understand how important it is to be certified as a B Corp towards this direction we have created uh, a B Corp landing page in our website you may visit it and uh, see and check more about our certification. We include the logo everywhere in our corporate, in our product communication and the packaging, of course, and we try to share the basic and important facts of our certification. You know, Apivita is not just a pioneer in a B Corp certification here in Greece. Apivita is a pioneer in innovation, a pioneer in environmental initiatives. I didn't mention, and I can see a very interesting question from Farugia in the chat box. Um, Apivita is at the same time member, a non a business member of 1% for the Planet organization. Um, so we collaborate with uh, local and international NGOs for the important, in order to educate the new generation about the importance of the beast to the ecosystem. Uh, we do a huge work in this field and we are really proud of this. So at Apivita, as you already understood, we do not talk only about obstacles and hurdles, but mostly about uh, challenges. If, if, if you want, I can give you a pretty, a pretty nice example. Um, the biggest hurdle was to to stay focused on our purpose and values while growing in very difficult and very adverse um, financial conditions. For example, um, we chose to build, as I mentioned before, this bioclimatic factory here in Greece. During the financial crisis here in Greece in 2008 to 2012, a factory worth 15 million euros during the economic crisis, at the, at the time the factory was built, our revenue was a bit more than 20 million and everyone was cutting back uh, on expenses. We remained true to our values and uh, lead the way by doing business unusual that brought us today in uh, 55 countries, as I mentioned before. Super, thank you so much to the three of you for sharing. I think uh, it's given a next depth to your presentations. So um, thank you for that. 
Uh, I've been monitoring the chat to make a selection for the next question, which has been a bit hard because we have a lot of great questions. Uh, we're not going to be able to get to all of them, but we will be sharing your questions uh, with the group after this. Um, so bear with us. But uh, there's two key, there's two questions that came up uh, more than once. So I'm going to try to combine a couple of the questions into one and see how far we get. So one of the questions uh, which came from Corina, which is, how long did the B Corp certification process take for you? And, and what were the toughest impact areas um, for you to answer? And I'd like to combine that also with a question that came out a couple of times around uh, mission lock, um, whether you had to change your statutes as part of the certification or whether you already had a dual mission. So it's a pretty packed question, but uh, opening the floor to any of the, the three of you to respond to it. <laughs> okay, maybe I can go ahead again. So it took like 20 months for us, uh, the full process. Uh, but I believe it was a, like a special case because there were a lot of applications uh, while we had uh, applied as well. So in total, like from the very first day to getting the application, it was 20 months. And um, looking at the challenges, I believe I could uh, call the customers part, the questions to be answered for the customer section, uh, because for those, uh, you need to create a collaboration with the customers that you work with, and you need to get uh, prioritization that, from them, uh, their focus, uh, they need to input uh, for the questions, uh, etc. So this part uh, needed a lot of effort, I believe. Uh, I could mention this one. Uh, yeah, well, maybe, maybe I can. Um, well, for us, I think it was around one year, something like that. We were stuck in between because, because other things came up. Um, but yeah, it was maybe a year of process. Um, I was trying to identify what was our biggest challenges. I think that maybe our challenge was because we are a tourism industry and it was on some, on some parts hard to fit in the, um, in the assessment um, and to be on board with the specification and understanding. Like, for example, one, one case is like, what is local? You know, it was, we work in Slovenia. Of course, Slovenia is a very small country. It's only 2 million people and also on size, it's small. But in local is understand, understood 60 kilometers from your base operation. We are based in the center in Ljubljana, but we really focus a lot on our tours to happen in destinations which are maybe underdeveloped when it comes to tourism, to bring them, to bring the tourism there where we see it's really needed and not to focus it on the destinations which are already overcrowded and really. Um, so we are trying to build that positive impact on um, working with local communities, but of course they're out of 60 kilometers from where we are stationed because, so these kind of understandings where we were going a little bit back and forth on how to understand those things because tourism is maybe a little bit specific, it's service, it's not so much product. So those things were for us maybe the hardest to find that common understanding. Um, but yeah, otherwise I think that we didn't have to change so much because as I said before, we were already certified for sustainable tourism. So now this was like an additional exercise, which I found it really inspirational. And we learned a lot, even though I thought like, we know so much already, but then we realized that no, we don't. So that was, uh, that was for me, like I would say the, the strongest part and we changed uh, even though I thought that we are already doing good but we changed a lot of things and we, I still know that we have a, a way to go quite a quite a long one and I'm excited about excited about that so I think it's it's the most learning and inspirational process I've been through in the last quite a long time let's say so I hope I answered the question. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
Corina, I will be honest with you, it took us a long, it took us a long time, both in uh, the certification of 2017 and in last year certification, especially in last year certification, it took us about uh, 20 months, including the verification stage in order to, to verify our a, a amazing score of 117 points. What I would recommend to others who want to start the process is just start uh, completing the, the B uh, impact assessment. It's a very uh, user-friendly uh, assessment questionnaire where you can find more information about the questions and to answer properly in order to start receiving some points to start uh, self-evaluating yourself in order to understand where do you stand regarding the industry, where do you stand regarding the base score of, uh, of the B Corp certification, which is uh, 80 points. So I don't think that we have to say something sophisticated. It start working with the B impact assessment and uh, the next uh, steps are, are coming then. Thank you all. Um, and actually, Sotiris, that's a, a great bridge to, to our final question for the panel. And I think uh, you, you touched upon it already, which is uh, there might be people here in the audience or people listening to the recording later that um, you know, want to start their impact journey, be it in their new company or they're starting to be entrepreneurs, but they don't know where to start. Um, so maybe to supplement uh, Sotir's response, uh, Yana or Karai, what would you advise um, these companies who are just getting started? Um, yeah, well, of course, um, assessment is the, the, the great way to start. Um, I would also say that it's um, now there is so much knowledge out there, which is really easily available, like webinars like that, let's say so, um, to get um, as much information as possible so that you know what you get yourself into and that you, before you even start, that you understand what that is actually bringing and to see how your core values are in line with um, certifications because it will be much easier for you if you start thinking about that, start changing your, the operation of your, uh, of your company or even start building it up as the, the moment you get more and more knowledge because we're, we work a lot with different um, green coordinators in businesses and destinations and we see that those who are, um, who, who have the knowledge, who go to the trainings, who get your, themselves really, uh, knowledgeable about uh, sustainability, corporate responsibility, all those questions out there, it will be so much easier. You know, it will be really, it will give you like, okay, now I know where I stand and I know where I want to go. So I would say really arm yourself with knowledge uh, would be a very, for me, a strong part and make sure that you have your whole team on, on, on your side. Uh, otherwise, Mm, it's much harder because you need to do it together. That's a joint effort. That's not a one person job, but it's core value of the company. So, yeah. Um, maybe just to add on, totally agree uh, with Yana's perception. So, um, first of all, all I can tell that if, if you just want to drive the impact, then you need to make sure that the impact is at the very heart of the business model that you created. It shouldn't be like a side effect or, or one of the outcomes among many others. So the, the core focus of the business model should be like built around creating value. And um, maybe this may not be the case for like every business, but as Fazla, we believe that technology also plays a crucial role. Uh, in being able to create the impact and also maybe more important than that, to be able to scale this impact even further. Uh, without technology usage, the uh, impact is like have some boundaries, you know, you cannot go beyond. And maybe another learning that can that we can share from our own journey is like, you know, there are three benefits in terms of sustainability, economical, social, and environmental. But if you are running a business, especially a B2B business, uh, then the economical benefit comes first. If you cannot have the economical benefit for all the stakeholders, then you cannot initiate the 
business itself. So therefore you need to make sure that the business model that you will offer to your customers creates an economical advantage, economical model for them, uh, and also uh, the environmental and social values uh, by that. Um, and last but not least, I also need to say, I, I'm not gonna say this because we are like uh, in the B, B Lab conference right now, but we really learned a lot from B Impact Assessment. Uh, it's so comprehensive uh, and that, that it like becomes a roadmap for you at some point and you clearly see uh, where you are doing well and where you are lacking, et cetera. So I strongly recommend, even if you cannot get the certificate, a, a, maybe at the beginning of the journey, it's very important to go and take the assessment and see at least the areas to improve uh, and where to focus on. Uh, that would be my last advice. What a, what a great way uh, to wrap up. Thank you so much, Yana. Thank you so much, Koray and, and Sotiris for, for sharing your stories, for being uh, honest about the fact that it's not always easy, but that if we, if we gather our teams and we really make sustainability uh, an impact at the, uh, the heart and the core of our business, uh, we, can, we can go a long way. I just wanna, didn't want to let you go without uh, keeping you a little bit updated of what's going on in the network and things that you can participate in and, and join in um, if you are able to. Um, it's a year of celebration for us at B-Lab Europe. Uh, we're turning uh, 10 years uh, this year. And to do that, we want to uh, invite all of our B Corps, employees of B Corps, but also friends of the movement or aspiring B Corps to join us in Amsterdam on the 12th of May. So we're bringing 12, more than a thousand B Corps from around Europe and friends of the movement together under one roof for the first time since COVID, which is really exciting. Um, we will have uh, celebrations, we'll have drinks together, we'll have food together in one of the most city's most iconic venues here in Amsterdam, which is the Nemo Museum. Um, you're super welcome to join us. Uh, in the chat, you'll be able to find more information as to where you can get tickets. And please also refer to the chat for more links. Um, if, if you've been inspired by our speakers today and you want to start exploring what the B Corp movement could, uh, could mean for you and how to use, start using our tools, uh, please make sure to, to, to go to those links. We will be sharing the recording of this presentation along with some of the key links and information that was shared with you. Um, and we'll also be uh, compiling your questions and hoping that we can get back to you uh, on some of the questions that we weren't able to um, address today in this panel. Um, if, if you're interested in the movement, if you'd like more information about how to get started, please don't hesitate to reach out to uh, Nico or myself. Um, and before wrapping up, I just wanted to say a huge, huge thank you again to our panelists for taking the time uh, for being with us today and for hopefully inspiring more companies uh, to start uh, their impact journeys uh, really soon. So uh, thank you everyone and wishing you a great rest of the week. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.